Hey everyone, this is Christian Heimel, host of Press Row. Thanks so much for listening to the following broadcast, courtesy of Public House Media. This is Rachel Mons, host of Hashtag No Filter Friday, here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my new show, Hashtag No Filter Friday, where we talk about all of the sexual misconduct allegations swirling around Hollywood. A new show drops every Friday at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Hashtag No Filter Friday. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you, even if you allow it. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you, if you allow it. Welcome to Choose to Rise. Today we are going to be talking about how to get more positivity into your life. We're going to be talking about how you can summon that positivity. It's not a matter of if you have positivity in your life. It's what you focus on that matters. If you want to connect with me more, you can go to chooseriseup.com. You can head over to our Facebook page, Choose to Rise Up, and follow me there. Follow my journey. Learn more about me. Let's get connected there. I love being a part of my listeners' lives. I love being a part of... Um, in connecting with the people that are part of um, the tribe of Choose Your Eyes. And so I just want to uh, connect with you there. So head over to Choose Your Eyes at Facebook after this podcast here and um, and hit follow, hit love, and um, let's get connected and, and see how we can work together and learn more about each other. All right. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you if you allow it. And this can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. But if you're looking for more positivity in your life, if you're looking for um, more good, you need to create more good. You need to create more positivity. The easiest way to attract more positivity into your life is creating more positive changes. The way we see things, the way we interpret emotions, the way we react to situations in our life, the way we focus on things, certain things that happen in our life, those are all detectives all things are going to be working towards whether we have a positive experience or a negative experience. If you're focusing on the good things that are happening in your day or you're focusing on the bad things, are you letting the tape of life replay in your head to always focus on the good things? Are you always looking at ways to um, really work through things in your in your day and your life that are, are the good or the bad? I personally, uh, I always bring things to the podcast of things that I'm working on myself. So me personally, I've been finding myself lately replaying the tape of how could I have done that better, which in some regards is a good thing. Self-reflection is awesome. However, when you always you focus on the bad things that have happened and you keep stirring up those kinds of emotions in your head and in your heart, that's when those the things that you focus on, you start creating more of. So let's be clear here. It's not about doing things or expecting things to always be perfect. It's not what I'm trying to get at here. It's about developing habits and tools that will help you deal with the negative situations, the bad moods, the emotional times, the the things that are, are bringing you down and work on being a little bit better. When I was younger, when I was um, even just a handful of years ago, I was always focusing on being better, doing more, um, creating more, proving myself to someone that I was good enough. But when I really made some changes in my life and I really started focusing on my own self growth and I started radiating positivity from my day because I was focusing on good things. I was filling my heart and my mind with good things. And I still do those kinds of things. I just wake up every single morning and thank God for all the good things that he's given us. Those are the first thoughts that come through my head. And if they're not the first things that come to my mind, I push those other things aside and start focusing on thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So if when I can focus my heart and my mind on gratitude from the get-go, the whole rest of my day gets better. When I can focus on my time and my energy on self-growth, I radiate positive energy instead of negative energy. When I find myself complaining about something, I try to filter those things out and find the good in things. So how do you do that? How do you focus on things? How do you start to change? How do you start to focus more on positivity? How did you do that, Kim? Right? Well, you can change from, um, you, you can change your thought process from not being enough to not being liked to not, um, doing something better to good enough to, I will accomplish my goals and dreams. 
with positive affirmations, with the feeling of things that you can do to get yourself moving forward. So here are a couple things that you can do in order to, to reach those things, okay? Number one, learn to pay attention. Pay attention to the thoughts that are going through your head. Pay attention and stay present and about protecting your energy and training yourself to pay attention to the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the, the things that are going on around outside of you. Falling into that negativity trap, even without realizing it, is so easy to do. I can find myself five minutes into a thought process of figuring out why whatever happened yesterday didn't work out well. You can find yourself falling into a negativity trap by being surrounded with people that are in gossip, that are nagging, that are listening to someone else complain about their day. Another person uh, bringing you know negativity into your life is not something that you want to necessarily stay connected to. A workplace situation um, where you're always nodding in agreement. There are people that are on autopilot their whole lives. We don't usually give a whole lot of thought to those kinds of things, but if we're not paying attention to the negative things that are happening in our life, it's going to suddenly, um, just suck the energy out of you. And you might be feeling if you're getting to the end of your day and you're just emotionally drained, it's probably because you've been around people that have been sucking your energy all day long and you just haven't realized it. So how do you get past this? When you're not paying attention, you still need to start paying attention. You need to be aware of what's happening in your head, what's happening around you, and pay attention to what people are saying. Listen to and then learn to detach yourself from other people's negative emotions. Instead of becoming emotionally a sponge, of where you're soaking them all in, detach yourself. You know, you can exit yourself from a conversation of someone that's not being positive. You can, you know, change the subject if you can't leave the situation, but change the subject so it's a more positive piece. You can do all kinds of things to detach yourself from those situations. And this is really where the secret is to attracting more positivity in your life is to spend most of your time focusing on things that if that are going well in your world. Focus on the things that you want to do be better. And when you act as if you are the person that you want to be, pretty soon you're going to become that person. So if you are focusing in on the things that you need, it's really about focusing in on the things that you want to be a part of. The second thing is to guard your speech. And I yes, I mean the things that you say out loud, but I also mean the things that you say inside. I'm sure that you've had at least or found yourself in at least one heated situation or an argument where you said something or you did something that you just didn't really mean. It was mean, it was cruel to someone close to you, you immediately regretted it, and you want to take those things back. Yeah, I've been in those situations too. Yeah, we often say or mean or cruel things to ourselves as well, and we never give that a second thought. Why? Why do we do that to ourselves? Why is being cruel to someone else the worst thing in the world, but being completely fine with being cruel to your cruel to yourself, an okay thing. A little self-criticism is healthy. A little bit of self-criticism of like, I can do better and self-reflection to have a solution to being better is an okay thing. But when it becomes excessive, when your inner dialogue, your self-talk becomes completely negative and you're always um, breeding more negativity by speaking more negativity into your life, the person that you are with the 100% the most is yourself. And so if you're going to have a conversation with yourself for the rest of your life, because that's how long you're with yourself, you are going to have to work on trying to have positive self-talk so that you can build yourself up. No one else is, is required to build you up. No one else is required to make you feel good. You are required to make you feel good. And if you're always telling yourself, I can't, um, if you're always telling yourself you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you're not, um, you're not enough, you're going to start to believe those things. Your self-talk self -talk doesn't only affect how you react to a situation, but it also is how you feel. Guard your speech and how you talk to yourself as much as you guard your speech when you talk to other people. And being more self-compassionate into your inner monologue, practicing self-compassion, has been linked to higher levels of motivation and lower levels of procrastination. When you believe that you're capable of doing the things that you're wanting to go do, you're much more likely to go do them. Not everything is black and white though. So don't assume or jump to conclusions. In life, there are quite a few gray areas. Not even everything is black and white. When you're under stress, you need to kind of step out of those situations and look at the bigger picture. 
you can't always make balanced conclusions when your emotions are high and evolved. So when you are you feeling yourself getting sucked into any sort of emotion, whether it's really super positive or negative, then you need to really kind of pull back and look at the whole thing. No matter how big or how small the situation may, may be, it can cause lots of stress. It can cause you feel to feel anxious, but it can also make you feel better. So get a realistic picture of what's going on and really think about, all of the emotions that are happening here. What is it that you want to focus on? Where are the good things that are happening in this situation? And where can you move towards those things? It won't be an easy change to make if you're naturally anxious or you're naturally impulsive. But in the end, going through and being aware of yourself and not jumping to conclusions and being paying attention to the big things are making a change is making that kind of change is uh, one that's going to help you the most. The third thing is judge less. Yes, judge less. As a close friend and family, it can be sometimes be super difficult to witness someone making what we think is a bad decision, whether it's a certain relationship or a career choice or maybe a fi- risky financial move. We can't help but want to be the want the best for other people. We love and that we want to have want others to do well. And it, it doesn't even have to be limited to the people that we are close to. A lot of us judge people on a regular basis, even strangers that walk past us. But what we can we can't help but want the best for people, but that doesn't mean that we have to give them our thoughts on things. Everyone is made in their own likeness. Everyone is made as a unique individual that God put them here for a certain purpose. It's not up to, up to us to dictate values and rules for other people to live by. And it, it, it's he is the final one. And he, if he has, he's the only one that can judge. He's the only one that can give us a verdict on life. And those things don't happen until you meet him up in heaven. So let go of the judging other people. It will only stop you from, from living a positive life. It will also stop you, um, and you can also stop from judging yourself so harshly. Letting go of judgment will help you realize that it's not, that's the negative thing that's in your life. Judgmental and love. And the, and the unloving voice and you hear in your head once in a while is not necessarily who you really are. So resist something negative and it will it'll help you um, keep the bad feelings away. Make a shift and attract more positivity into your life and you are able to give some of that positivity out. Just like you can't take make a half empty glass of water suddenly appear full and you be, just by adding more water to it, you have to expect to live a happier life if you're going to resist negativity. Negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions are always going to be a part of our life. They're always going to have a purpose with us too, but that doesn't mean that we have to focus on them. Um, it's the movie Inside Out. Uh, where there's that scene at the end where Joy figures out that sadness has to be there, right? There has to be sadness in order for us to have joy. There has to be all the emotions in our life. We have to feel all of them um, in order to feel to really appreciate the positive things. But that doesn't mean that we have to focus all of our energy and attention on the bad things. We can't always replace the bad with the good. We have to feel all of it. But the only way to feel good again is by allowing yourself to feel exactly what you're feeling in the moment. Disconnect from the things that are going to keep you there. Let go of the anchors of negativity in your life and float away on the 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 pond of positivity. Now that's a crazy metaphor, I know, but like follow with me here, okay? This is a simple way to build trust with yourself. It's a way to, you can suddenly drop your mood and your positive energy by just letting go. Let go and let God, right? Let go of the things that are holding you back. Let go of the things that have been in your past. Your past doesn't, has shaped you, but it doesn't have to define you. It doesn't have to be the things that carry you forward. Those are the things that you're going to let go and be who God made you to be moving forward forward. He doesn't necessarily want us to suffer. He doesn't want us going through bad things, but he also knows that there is good and bad in this broken world and that we as humans have to experience all of it in order to keep moving forward. So if you're looking for more positivity in your life, let go and forgive. The heaviness, the resentment, the anger that often comes with, with the unwillingness to forgive, whether it's forgiving yourself or someone else, take you away, take away a lot from you. They take the focus away from your joy. They take the focus away from your happiness. They take the focus away from the fun and the exciting things that are part of your life. You can spend your entire life beating yourself up over the mistakes and the failures and the things from your past that have happened to you or that you've created, but none of that that will change because it's a part of your past. It's very easy to find yourself in a pattern where you're beating yourself up over things that you can't necessarily even 
do or think about or change. But when you can focus on the good things, when you can, you will feel far less anxious. You will feel far less down on yourself and you will feel far less negative in your life. If you can focus on moving forward and learning from your past and not reliving them, but telling yourself that over and over that you are worth it, that you are full of love, you are are full of joy, that positivity is a part of who you are, and then move forward in those um, definitions of your life and getting away from the things that are holding you back. So that's what I would say for today if you find more positive in your life. Let go and forgive. Don't resist um, resist judgment. Judge less in people. Uh, guard your speech for, of others and yourself. And also learn to pay attention to what's going on in your life. The thing that, that is holding, that all begins and ends with what's in your mind. What you give power to has power over you if you allow it. So the key here is what are you allowing in your life? What is it that you're focusing on? What is, are you allowing to judge who you are and what's happening? So that's what I got for you today. I hope you had an amazing um, experience day and that you come back and listen in on us a lot more. Um, we have shows that are, if you head over to Podbean or Apple Podcasts, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a rating and review because it not only helps me find you and connect with you, but it also helps me, um, you know, and helps other people find us as well. So thank you so much for listening today. I love connecting with you. I hope that you get to be a part of us here again, and I hope to see you all very soon.